Hey everyone, this is Nanagon. In this video, I wanted to give you guys a tutorial of a tool that I built in GitHub. It's called Fat Free Dev Tools, and it really will help you bootstrap your application really, really fast. So here I have something that is totally new, brand new, and what you can do, so here it is, it's Nanagon slash Fat Free Dev Tools. And if you read the readme, Got to get Composer first, but then you can do Composer Global Require and then this tool, and you will be at the same point I am right now. So I, if I start typing fat, and then I do a tab, then it's there's fat free, and I have my options that I have. So if you look back here, one of the, the usage is you can do serve admin. When you do serve admin, it will provide the web tools for you, uh, in order to get your directories and your paths and all that stuff kind of started out. But first, we'll just install uh, Fat Free really quick. Oh, gotta type it right. Oh my gosh, it's too early in the morning. Alright, so that puppy's in there. So now I'll do this, serve admin. So it says here, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. It's something started. So it said, go to HTTP, I'll go here. So if I'll go here and look, it already starts me with how to initialize my environment. So I'll click next and I'll title it, you know, this is uh, my dev tools test. So then it will give you a directory setup of a lot of things. You can just leave the defaults if you want, but you can also customize these if you really need them to be as well. Uh, usually what I do is I pull everything that is not in the public directory out and put it in the app directory. So you can see all this stuff here. And next. So then it will set up some config files and a routes file, a CLI routes. This isn't totally used just yet. This entire project right here, you can see it. I'm only on 0.1.3. There's still a long way to go, but it does a good job of what it does right now. And there's a services file. This will, this, these are different variable configurations that you could go through the documentation on, uh, on the fatfreeframework.com website. Uh, but I try to help get this as quick as possible so you can, you know, you're debugging however you want it to debug and encoding and all that stuff. So I just leave all the defaults. Uh, let's say I want to do a MySQL database. So this will show you how to create the database and then you create a user for the database and then you can do it down here. So, you know, if my host was different or here we'll do... Dev tools test some user some pass next so uh, one thing that I feel is really important is security and as part of this I guess environment in it I wanted to go over a few things so there's SQL injection and I have another video about that but basically, you really should be using prepared statements or with question marks or named parameters. You really should be doing that everywhere. Don't do this anymore. This is bad and it's just prone to problems. Um, there's also scrubbing data where you can really uh, protect yourself from cross-site scripting. There's another plugin that another user did but gave me permission to publish. So there's this guy right here. And then... Uh, doing HTTPS on your website is super easy. Just do let's encrypt and it's super easy. Uh, there's templating engines that I want to go over as well, which is part of a cross-site scripting preventative attack, because if you're doing that, then uh, you're, it's really difficult for someone to inject some bad JavaScript into your code. It's also just nice to separate out your, your things. So here we go. Build your environment, boom. My environment's now built, and now I have this cool stuff here. So I have controllers. It generates a couple controllers automatically. I can add a new one. Let's say I want company controller. 
and look, there's company controller. And then I can add an endpoint. You know, I have the index endpoint, but now I want, oh, let's see, um, update. And then maybe like update post, something like that. I can add routes. So I have a, a root action here. So if I add a get for, let's see here, companies. I don't have anything namespace just yet. So this could just be companies index action. So now I'm just like, uh, I'm thinking, oh, I need some type of a model. Well, I have a company model and it uses the company's table. Well, and maybe I have a, a user model and it uses the user's table. Uh, there's also this up here, adminner. It's built into the Fat Free Dev Tools. You just click on here and just do your, the information I just put in there. It was, you know, some user, some pass. That local host and it would make me hop in there and just a really quick access to you know hit your database stuff that you need so you know now i've created a couple things but let's see what that actually did so now if you come back here you'll notice remember i had just like composer and vendor well now i have public and it's defining a couple things but then it hits this bootstrap file so bootstrap now it registers my autoloader, starts the framework right here, does a couple you know, basic things, hits a config, and this config will actually pull in my regular config, my routes, and my CLI routes. If you remember, those were some of the options to do during the, the environment setup. You can see here I have some routes. I had this one that was already defined, and this is the one I just added. And so my services here, uh, it's already set up and working. Um, this, it, I added some of these as something that could help out while you're dealing with temp the templating platform inside of FatFree. This is so if you were doing something in the templating system like, you know, here's an array of, you know, companies. You can do length and it would give you a length of that. You know, this, it would pass through a filter if you did had a string so let's see uh, let's do something a little more check if that's how you would use it so you could see like if there's a length here then do something with it instead of you know manually doing count just seems a little more convenient to do this and there's also um, some helpers with dates so let's say I had something like uh, added date time or whatever. I can add a second parameter of a time zone, you know, America, Denver, and then do convert date. And so what it will do is all, no matter what your project is, every date you save period end of story will always be in UTC it just will save so much time and headache down the road. And then what you do is you convert that UTC date to whatever time zone you want. So for instance, if you're building a really localized software package and your time zone is America Denver, then you could just put America Denver everywhere or it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But as soon as you branch into different time zones and you want to display time you know, for the user properly, you really need to have your stuff stored in UTC or things just get ugly really fast. So it's my advice, just store everything in UTC. So anyway, so there are some template helpers in here. You'll see here's the company controller I just made. Remember I added, you know, update and update post and all this stuff is kind of like done for me. And there's a base controller that has some helpful, you know, information in here. It doesn't define anything for before or after route, but it's there in case you need to use it. And this will help you quickly output a JSON or an HTML response. So you would just do like this, output HTML response, HTML, throw in a response code and echo it out. Nothing too complicated there. There is a, a mapper shim that I put in here. And what's cool about this is this will make it so your 
objects are JSON serializable. So for instance, if you had something that was like, you know, companies equals DB SQL mapper, and we'll just say it's DB class, and then, you know, companies. We'll just, first, quick introduction here. So we have this, and then you go, you know, found companies equals companies find. Let's just find everything. So what you could do is do JSON encode found companies, and it will actually encode it for you. If you, if, I mean, all this is doing is just this cast. No, actually, you would, yeah, you would do this, and it would just cast it as um, JSON serializable, so that this would work. This is especially helpful in something like an API. So now that let's see that's that, and you can see over here that this is how um, uh, this gives you some example code. So here we have a parent construct, and it just very easily makes it so you can just do like new company and then just inject the db and you're good to go this scrolls too much there we go so there's also two helper events in models that you can use there's before insert and before update with before insert obviously before you insert something you can do things and it's really helpful if like you're generating a token or keeping track of a timestamp uh, before update is like if you're updating a you know some type of a timestamp or you know so-and-so is updating it or whatever, whatever the case may be. This is just really helpful um, to have this done automatically instead of specifying it every single time. So continuing on over here, we have, it has a basic task controller in here. Uh, this is what we can use in CLI events. Looks like I need to build that out. Told you it's in kind of beta form, but doing well so far. Um, I have a test directory here. And there's an example, and if you call this file, it will run all the tests in here and give you a thumbs up, thumbs down if it's doing well or not. And unit tests are really helpful to know that your stuff is properly um, built or not. Here's your UI, and then there is a little utils thing. Here's that template helper I was talking about. And just a really simple date class that you can get a timestamp, get a date, or convert a date. And um, this is also something to help you generate a time zone array, uh, especially if you're like, here's a user section, you want them to be able to select some time zone or whatever. This is just a simple helper function function that I got uh, from Stack Overflow that was really helpful, and I tweaked it just a little bit. So that's the general gist of how this works. Um, go ahead, feel free to try it out. Hopefully it helps you guys in your projects that you're working on. And uh, you just go through here, you can add controllers, routes, endpoints, uh, models, and those are just some of the real core things. In the future, this will have other things like uh, uh, config check, some type of a health or security check, interactions with Composer, lots of other really cool little tools. So this is just the groundwork of it, but at least it should help get your stuff done and uh, set up properly. So if you like my videos, I like them. I hope you do, but if you do like them, feel free to subscribe so that it motivates me to do more of these cool types of videos. Thanks so much.